really wanted the white cardigan. Um, this was $45 Canadian, which is... Hey guys, it's Viv and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am here with Paisley and Melody, and we were today really inspired by my Froggy Stuffs Versus series. So if you watched my video from a couple weeks ago, um, you know that I recently purchased um, Melody's Easter accessories, and it came with a white cardigan from American Girl that you see Melody is wearing here on the right. So then this cardigan was kind of expensive because it was like $45, so I was thinking, you know, like, this is such a simple piece, it's great for everybody to have, but not everyone has $45 they can afford to drop on an American Girl cardigan. So I decided to upcycle an old sweater of mine and make it for myself, which is um, the one that you see Paisley is wearing here on the left. And that is what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do today, is how to make your very own um, cardigan that looks just like the one from American Girl. Um, but before we get into the tutorial, I do have a couple announcements because most of my videos up until now have been pre-recorded, so I haven't been able to come into the intro and say things that I want to say. So I just want to make this super quick, but first of all, thank you so much for 3,000 subscribers. I am so speechless. I cannot believe that we are here at 3,000 people. That is insane to me. Like, that's so many. So I'm really thankful and really grateful that all of you are here on my channel. Thank you for supporting me over the years. And I promise that I will do my best to bring more great content for all 3,000 of you. Um, second of all, um, I posted a little message at the beginning of my room tour video. But um, as of right now, the time that I'm filming this, it is April the 7th? Eight, it's April the 18th, um, and this will go up on April the 19th, so um, 2020. So we are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, I'm doing okay, and I hope that you are all doing okay as well. Um, please continue to social distance and self-isolate if you must, um, and just keep everyone in your community as safe as possible so that we can help reduce the spread of this virus. And um, I hope that it's not affecting you guys and your family, but if it is, um, I am thinking of you. I send my thoughts and my love out to you. Um, so yeah, I just hope that you know everyone is doing well and staying inside, and um, I hope we all continue to stay healthy during this pandemic, and hopefully it all goes over soon. So the victim of today's DIY is going to be this old white sweater I had from Forever 21. I used to wear it a lot so it's pretty beat up, but any white sweater will do as long as it has a ribbed binding at the end of it or somewhere on the um, garment that it isn't too beat up because this area will be visible on our finished um, cardigan. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to cut off that ribbed binding so we can save it for later and use it on the cardigan as I just mentioned. And then I'm going to open up the side seam of the sweater so that I can cut out my pieces. So the pattern that I'm going to use for this is just a simple long sleeve t-shirt pattern. I will link it in the description box down below or at least one similar because I don't know if you can find the one that I'm using exactly still on the internet because I found it probably like five years ago at this point. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to follow the instructions on the pattern pieces for cutting them out on my sweater. Now, because we are working with knit material, before you start sewing, switch the needle in your sewing machine to a ballpoint needle. If you don't have one, regular sewing needles will work, although the ballpoint needle does give a nicer result. So now with the front piece of the t-shirt, which is actually going to be the back of our cardigan facing right sides up, you can face the back pieces of the t-shirt, which are the front pieces of our cardigan on top right sides together, sew at the shoulder seams, and then now we are going to attach the sleeves, which I know can be tricky, so I'm going to show you how I like to do them. So first thing I do is I take my sleeve piece and I fold it in half and then I notch the center point of the curve at the top, so that way I can match it up to the arm side. Then I'm going to take my bodice piece with the arm side facing upwards with the U shape, I guess, going upwards as well. And then starting from the middle point, so where the shoulder seam is and where I marked that middle point on the sleeve piece, I'm going to begin pinning them together. So I start with one pin at the middle where the shoulder seam and the notch connected. And then, um, that was not proper English, but that's okay. And then um, I just pin up either side. This part may take a little bit of practice, so just be patient and try not to poke yourself with the pins while you do this. Um, I'm only using three pins per, I guess, side, so I have um, six pins in total, but um, you can use more pins if you feel necessary. And um, you can see here that I've finished one side and then I'm just going to go back and do the other side. And then once you finish pinning up the sleeves on both sides, you can go ahead and sew them on using a straight stitch. 
Then once you have them sewn on, you can make tiny little cuts in the seam allowance, like little notches going around. And what this does is it helps um, release tension in the seam and helps your curve flip over more easily. So after you do that, just go ahead and cut off any loose threads that you may have. Then grab your binding from earlier that we cut off the sweater and cut it down to a manageable size. Then sew this on to the cuffs of the sleeves, stretching as you sew to create a little bit of a gather and like a stretchy sleeve, I guess. So this is what mine looks like. Um, you don't have to top stitch it down. I just did that because I thought it looked neat. But I do recommend finishing the inside with a zigzag stitch on the seam allowance so that um, no fraying occurs. Do this on both sleeves and then fold the garment in half so you match um, the sleeves up with the sleeves. Like you fold it in half and then you'll see what I'm doing in the video. It becomes like a sweater shape. And then um, you want to pin up the side seams and then sew those into place using a straight stitch. So once you finish sewing either um, side seam of the cardigan, go ahead and flip it right sides out. Then grab some more binding and sew it onto all the raw edges that are remaining on the cardigan. So you want to sew them onto the two front pieces, but don't stretch these as you sew them on. Just sew them on as normal. And then sew on the collar, stretching as you sew. And sew um, binding onto the bottom of the cardigan, stretching slightly as you sew. You don't really have to unless you want um, the bottom of the cardigan to kind of hug the doll's waist. Um, I stretched it a little bit so that it would hug the doll's waist a little bit, but not too much. Now grab some buttons. I didn't have like perfectly white buttons, so I grabbed these white but a little bit translucent buttons that I had laying around in my sewing pile. And then I'm going to stitch those onto one side of the cardigan using a needle and thread. And then for buttonholes, you can either, you know, whip out your sewing machine and do buttonholes um, with the buttonhole foot, or you can be lazy like me and literally just cut holes because they do the same job. If you're worried about these buttonholes fraying, you can stitch around them using a needle and thread, but I didn't just because I'm not gonna use the buttons too much on this cardigan, so um, the chances of fraying are slim to none, so I'm not too worried about it. But then, after you finish um, cutting your holes and sewing your buttons, the cardigan is finished. So here is how mine looks next to the one from American Girl. I'm actually quite happy with the way it turned out. I don't think it is as cute as the one from American Girl just because like, that one is actually properly made with knit material and like the knit on that one has like a little bit of texture on it so it does look pretty but i am very happy with the way mine turned out so thank you so much for watching today's video everyone that is it for today so if you liked it be sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and other american girl lol videos such as sewing tutorials outfit videos hairstyle videos and more and be sure you follow me on instagram because i do post a lot of pictures there of my doll stuff and um always updates of my daily life so my instagram is at dolly delights just like how my youtube channel is spelt that is again all i have to say for today's video and i will see you next time for another one bye